introduce myself. I'm uh, Dr. Adela Mignon. Uh, I'm an invasive cardiologist uh, since, uh, since six years now, working in the University Hospital of Charleroi in uh, Belgium. And uh, I have a particular interest in uh, radial access and also in a slender approach for transradial access. Yes, of course, it was uh, basically two cases of complex bifurcation. Uh, which is still considered as a complex uh, lesion setting because uh, it, you need a lot of adjunctive devices. There's a higher rate of complication when you do such, such lesions. So uh, this is definitely a difficult subset of lesion uh, needing a specific approach and uh, specific devices uh, to complete the procedure successfully. Um, and this has been done nicely through the transradial approach, which was one of the goals of the, of the session. Um, and with a high, good procedural success, uh, both cases, and uh, also we have uh, seen during the during the, the live case uh, the the amount of tools that you can use, uh, of course, for for the transfer access itself, the sheet. We have seen the glide sheet slender, and also a lot of uh, specific wires and balloon that you can use uh, in these two cases of bifurcation. Yeah. Uh, today, yeah, there was a very calcified lesion, one of them needing uh, uh, debulking with the rotational atherectomy, and the other one uh, could be managed uh, in uh, the usual way with the provisional stenting approach. Uh, and then they had to put a second stent, and then we have nicely see uh, the, the tap technique as shown by Dr. Fajadeh, uh, which is a very often used uh, two stent technique. Basically, what we've seen here is that uh, whatever the case you have to perform, everything can be done through the transradial approach. Uh, basically, you can use five, six French sheet, seven, up to seven French guiding catheter through the transradial approach. So that allows you to perform most of your complex PCI through the transradial approach very, very, very uh, uh, easily, uh, I would say. So I think uh, there are, this, this case is well managed as it should be done in the usual way. Uh, Provisional stenting approach. Uh, one of them, uh, uh, Dr. Fajadi, decided to put a, a second stand because there was a very tight lesion at the ostium of a very important diagonal. Um, and so I think uh, these cases were done very in the usual fashion. I think the uptake of transradial approach is growing uh, worldwide, but uh, there are still many centers, many countries that are not using the transradial approach. And one of the main limitations in the mind of femoral operator is that the, the size of the radial artery doesn't allow to, to insert large guiding catheter, which are sometimes necessary for the treatment of very complex lesion. But we have shown today that uh, clearly you can, you can treat the whole spectrum of complex disease through the transfer approach since you can put uh, a five, six or seven French sheet very easily. You can use the sheetless approach, you can use the glide sheet slender which allows you to, to, to decrease the sheet to, to artery ratio uh, which is a very important aspect when you deal with transradial access because if you are beyond uh, the, the diameter of the radial artery, you create a mismatch and this mismatch can promote several unfavorable features like a medial dissection, pain, spasm, uh, local inflammation, chronic remodeling, and ultimately what we want to avoid, which is rather to occlusion. So the, the main message is that for each case, you should use the smaller sheet necessary to complete your procedure. If you need to tackle a regular bifurcation lesion, you, have, you can do it with a six French, and then it's very easy through the radial approach. If it's a very, very complex bifurcation, a very large left main uh, involving, for example, three branches, then you can choose a seven French. You can still do it through the radial approach. It's more difficult because then you have the limitation of the size of the radial artery, but now we have the seven French slender sheet from Terumo, uh, which is a new device that uh, uh, really uh, can uh, broaden the spectrum of, uh, of this kind of cases that, you, that before we cannot do through the radial approach. The problem of the radial artery is beyond the size. You have more arterial variation during the course of the radial artery up to the, up to the coronary ostia. So this can be managed with a, let's say, after a good learning curve. You can manage all this anatomical variation. 
Uh, but at the beginning, it can be difficult sometimes. Uh, that, that's another limitation, the size of the radial artery, the anatomical limitation. And uh, some patients can have an increased tendency to spasm, and spasm itself can lead to procedural failure. So if you, if you choose, as I said, the, the smaller sheet necessary, if you give a, a vasospastic cocktail at the beginning of a procedure, and you, are in, and you tackle very gently the radial artery with the wire and the catheter, you will avoid most of these complications. And then at the end, you will complete most of your cases successfully by the radial approach. I think it's, it's because now we are moving to um, a lot of structural cases, so it's important to, to keep some skills and knowledge regarding the transfemoral approach, okay? But uh, basically, in my mind, we can do almost every case through the transfemoral approach. The main limitation is when you have an occluded radial artery, of course. You have to change the, um, you have to change the, the access seat, of course. Huh? Uh, so you have to preserve the radial artery. This is a very important message. So the, the main benefit is that uh, every time you, you, you decrease this sheet to artery ratio using this slender sheet, you decrease the rate of vascular injury and then you decrease the rate of radial artery occlusion. Uh, we have seen yesterday, uh, Dr. Saito has presented the result of the rap and beat trial, uh, showing a randomized comparison of the six French slender against the five French regular sheet from Terumo. And the global result for the six French was very good. Huh? There was a rate of radial artery occlusion around 3.5%, but it was somewhat higher than what it was expected, uh, and it was higher than the five French standard sheet. So uh, the, the, the main message is that every time you, you take a larger sheet diameter, you will end up with more uh, a higher rate of radial artery occlusion. But now, since then, we have uh, three standard sheets. We have the five French slender, which has a very uh, small outer diameter, a 2.16 millimeter. We have now the 6 French, which was the first one released in the, on the market. And now we have the 7 French. I think that the main message is that you need to tailor the choice of your slender sheet according to the indication. If you are a center doing mostly diagnostic angiography and then elective PCI, there are, there are no need to use uh, a six French slender sheet, for example. Then you can start to do all your cases with the five French slender, and when you go for elective PCI, then you can use the six French slender. Uh, in centers doing a lot of ad hoc PCI, just like in my center, we use the six French slender as the workhorse sheet, because we don't like to exchange the sheet during the procedure. And every time you have to go for very, very complex lesion, then you can upsize to the seven French slender. So I think every time you have to make a good balance between what you need uh, as a sheet size, what you need as adjunctive devices to complete the procedure successfully, and the fact that you want to preserve the radial artery. And the, the main message, as I, uh, as I told before, is to use the smallest sheet necessary to complete the procedure. So you have to tailor the choice of your slender sheet according to the indication. That's the main message, I think. Radial artery occlusion is definitely a major drawback of radial access because it precludes the use of the same radial artery for future procedures. So it's very important to preserve uh, the patency of the radial artery. I think uh, to prevent radial artery occlusion, uh, it's a multifactorial approach. The sheet size plays a big role, and that's why we, we should go for slender approach. We, we have to use slender sheet, we have to use sheetless approach when needed, etc., etc. And also, we need to perform what is considered best practice in transradial approach, which is giving a good level of anticoagulation in all patients, um, and also to, at the end of the procedure, try to achieve what we call patent hemostasis, which means that you, 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 you have a successful hemostasis with a, still, with a flow in the radial artery. This is called patent hemostasis. If you do that on top of good anticoagulation and slender approach, you will end up with the lowest rate of radial artery occlusion. Basically, every good radial centers should have a rate of radial artery occlusion below 5%. This is, I think, mandatory.